Thank you for the opportunity to be here today. It always feels like I'm among friends when I'm with this group. Um, thank you, Maxine, all the leaders of the faith community. Uh, thank you, Governor Raimondo, for your leadership on so many issues and making possible the successes of last year. Each year, it is my pleasure to come and join with you for this important event. Because as we begin on our legislative duties, it is so important that we're mindful of those Rhode Islanders that are most in need. Joining with us today are members of the House and the Senate. I want to specifically identify my colleagues in the Senate that are here, and I'd ask them to raise their hands. One who is, of course, a leader in his own right, our new president pro tem, and no stranger to the faith community, Senator Harold Metz. Senator Metz. <laughs> we also have with us Senator Coyne up there. Well, thank you, Senator Coyne. And I think it's a real tribute that we have two of our freshman senators here, Senator Seveny and Senator Calkin. Senators? I also don't dare recognize all the members of the House, and I'm sure I'll leave some out, but I would recognize him because he's so tall. We have Rep. Bregenberg here, <laughs> and Representative Hull because he waves. <laughs> so, and uh, any of the reps that are here, if you'd just like to raise your hand, Representative is also a couple more reps that are here as well. So they've taken time from their busy schedules to join us. In many ways, the work that we consider a priority in the Senate this year addresses the issues of poverty because those issues that relate to poverty are also imperative to rebuilding our economy. Those two issues are not exclusive. We're committed to investments in education, job training, early childhood services, child care. All of these are important economic factors as well. They benefit our broader economy while giving each of your families the individual tools that they need to succeed. But I recognize that we need to be vigilant and we need to maintain the progress that we've made on issues to date, particularly as we know both at the national level as well as the state level in areas such as health care coverage, quality of child care, and particularly because of the unpredictability of the new federal administration. Also, though, is critical, and this administration has made a priority, is improvements to our infrastructure. And we will continue to try to work together to address and find a solution to the current RIPTA bus fare dilemma for low-income seniors and disabled individuals. I do want to echo the governor's comments about the $50 million housing bond. While we recognize that the challenge of homelessness will always remain, the new, as new individuals fall on hard times, real progress is being made here in Rhode Island to address the issue of homelessness. And it's important we mention our victories. Two years ago, the Senate and the housing advocates set a standard of ending homelessness, or goal of ending homelessness, among veterans and reducing homelessness among chronically homeless individuals. The Zero in 2016 campaign, and we do want to celebrate our victories, has resulted in housing for an incredible 845 Rhode Islanders that were formerly housed in homeless. That wouldn't have happened but for the advocacy of the people in this room. And finally, I do want to mention a Senate priority, and I recognize the governor for her leadership, as well as Chairman McCaffrey, who had hoped to be here, chair of the Judiciary Committee, as well as Representative Craven, who I have not seen here today, for their work on the adjustment reinvestment initiatives. They will be reintroduced early this session, and we will hopefully have hearings very early and hope that among your prayers today are included for passage of those bills in this upcoming session. And finally, as I know you're aware, 
The House, the Senate, and the Governor are all committed to increasing the minimum wage to ensure that we remain competitive with our neighboring states. As well, the Senate has identified a priority of increasing wages for our direct care providers, those that take care of our elderly and our disabled, our working at barely minimum wage at this point, and they deserve better from us. <laughs> Finally, I just want you to know my door is always open, and the doors of the Senate are always open to you and your advocacy. I know and don't expect that we'll ever be able to reach every goal that we set, but that's not an excuse for us to stop trying and for you to keep the pressure on us to keep trying. So thank you very much.